to Sharon Reeder, who's been patiently waiting for a turn to speak in Sierra Leone. Now, Sharon uh, is a beneficiary communication delegate with IFRC in Sierra Leone. And she's worked with the Red Cross movement for about eight years now, initially within the UK as the uh, British Red Cross representative on CDAC, and then for two years as the IFRC's beneficiary communications delegate in Haiti. And more recently, um, she's been working in Sierra Leone, as we said, as part of the Red Cross response to the cholera outbreak. Now, um, Sharon, welcome, and thank you for being so patient. Um, I wonder if you could tell us a bit about the beneficiary communications program you ran for the Red Cross in Haiti after the 2010 earthquake. And I mean, and I mean, talk about that program as well as the one in Sierra Leone, but could you tell us what you've been able to accomplish through these programs? I mean, what were some of the most interesting innovations? Sure. Well, the, the program in Haiti was the first time that IFRC had had a dedicated beneficiary communication delegate. Um, they learned their lesson quite well from the tsunami where I think most aid agencies fell short when it came to communicating. Um, so they decided this time they were going to invest and they were going to have a, a dedicated uh, delegate and team working on it. We started off with um, local radio. Um, we did a, a weekly talk-in radio show, which uh, is, is quite popular. A lot of agencies have mentioned this already. That was um, pretty important for us in that it was able to address not just earthquake issues, but also other ongoing issues, obviously, when the cholera started. But then other issues of Haitian Red Cross interest, like, for example, blood donation, which is a key service for them. So it was quite a good way to bridge between the emergency operation and also the ongoing programmes that existed in Haiti. We also had the um, SMS system, which is probably the biggest innovation to come out of Haiti for the Red Cross. Um, this system allowed us to send SMS direct to people's mobile phones, either by a list of telephone numbers or by geographical area which was great because it very much allowed us to target information to the people that needed to know it. We also had some traditional means like notice boards and camps. We had um, a Red Cross sound truck, which would go around. And then we had a partnership with um, a Haitian call center called NULA, who had originally been started up by the UCGD team. And so we worked with them to run a, a manned question and answer response line. And then later on in the emergency, we introduced a, a, an automated telephone line as well, um, which I'll, I'll probably talk a bit, a bit more later. In Sierra Leone, um, it was quite a different operation. It wasn't such a, a massive disaster that saw you know, buildings collapsed. It was a, a cholera outbreak. So it was affecting maybe 5% of the population as opposed to almost the, the whole country. Um, there, the focus was much more on how can we get information out to people, um, but in a kind of interactive and engaging way. Cholera is not new in Sierra Leone, so people have heard the key messages about washing hands and drinking clean water. So it was how can we sell them that in a more interactive and engaging way. So we again did radio, uh, a national radio show with the, the national broadcaster SLBC. Um, that's weekly, and again can address more than just cholera. We also set up a mobile cinema tour, which went all around the country, reached about 50,000 people. And the, the tour was much more than just showing a film. It was, it was tying up traditional hygiene promotion activities like hand-washing demonstrations and singing songs about making sugar-salt solution with the film. So it was a, a really good way to get a community together. And we had audiences of up to seven, 800 people would come in and sit there for an hour and a half and um, take part in that. And it was very interactive as well. So we would ask communities, what, what do you think the issues are here that, that make you vulnerable to cholera? Um, and then we'd talk about maybe what some of the solutions to that would be. So it was a, a really participatory, interactive um, activity. And then finally, we also handed out radios here in Sierra Leone, um, wind-up solar-powered radios. Um, and we encouraged the Red Cross volunteers, the community-based volunteers, to use these radios as listening groups in the existing community groups, like mothers' clubs, school clubs, um, PLHIV groups. And they could not only listen to our own radio show, but also tune into other important information um, broadcast on other community stations, whether that was just news updates or 
you know other other valuable information so it was it was an empowering tool um, and and also a good way to get feedback into our own radio show and and sharon i understand that ifrc has also developed um terra the trilogy emergency relief application with trilogy international yes. partners could you explain what this is and how the how well the partnership works with the private sector and how does the technology sure. differ from this SMS alert systems? You're talking to the technically challenged here. Technically <laughs> challenged. <laughs> Not a tech expert, so I, I understand the challenges. Um, the Terra system really came about. My predecessor in Haiti, Will Rogers, um, flew out to days after the earthquake, and he literally sent an email to the two main uh, mobile companies, Voila and Digicel. Voila came back to us very quickly um, saying, yep, we, we think we can come up with some way to use SMS. Um, Voila is owned by, by Trilogy who, who built the system. So Will worked very closely with it. It wasn't just designed by tech people or just designed by humanitarians. I think the strength is that it was a very collaborative approach, which we got a system that worked for the Red Cross but it also isn't too intrusive on the telecommunications company, so it'll work from their perspective as well. The system is in that it doesn't require people to register for information. So we have we have an online gateway. I log in. I'll see a map of Haiti or, or hopefully soon Sierra Leone. I can pick a region that I want to send a message to, and then the message goes from our gateway direct to the mobile cell tower. So it goes directly into people's telephones without a, a registration system. Um, that's really powerful when it comes to things like hurricane warnings or here in Sierra Leone, they suffer from wildfire. So really important when you need to get information out extremely quickly um, without first having to advertise it. Um, we had great results um, in Haiti. We did an evaluation into the system, basically asking the public, what do you think of this? Um, what do you think of these messages? Are they helpful? Do you use them? Uh, do you see them as junk? Just bin them? <laughs> um, results positive. 96% uh, of people who had received an SMS from Red Cross said that it provided them with useful information. And about 90% said that they made some sort of change in their life as a result of that information. So um, for us, very much the focus is on this, this idea of practical use it's not a fundraising tool, it's not a promotional tool. Um, it's about giving people simple pieces of information that can then help them. For example, how to make homemade oral rehydration solution or the fact that if you dig a trench outside your home when it floods, it's less likely to flood uh, inside your house. So it's, it's very, very practical information. Thanks, Sharon. 